<laughs> Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about identifying sub gigahertz devices, and then we're going to do some capture and emulation. When I got my Flipper Zero, I had a hard time because I didn't quite understand uh, what sub gigahertz was uh, and what devices were using it. I tried to do research online, but a lot of the results I was finding were mostly academic papers and uh, websites for companies trying to sell sub gigahertz technology to IoT developers and manufacturers. Uh, that's because sub gigahertz is not really a customer facing technology. Uh, and so nothing is gonna really say now featuring sub gigahertz on like the packaging or anything. Uh, it's usually a closed system, it doesn't require any sort of user interaction, there's no pairing, there's nothing like that. Uh, and it's it's usually just within, uh, you know, used within a specific device. It's not like you can use one remote for another function and so on. So sub gigahertz is really just shorthand for radio frequencies under one gigahertz. Uh, these are special because they are uh, unlicensed and there is some space carved out for commercial use. So companies can uh, sell devices that operate uh, on those radio frequencies. What I have here is a, a little tag of fob and a remote. Uh, now I have a pack of these fobs. There's six in all and they all have different colors corresponding to a button on the remote because uh, these are key finders. My girlfriend got me this because I am terrible at finding my keys, uh, no matter my best intentions on trying to put them back into like the right place. Uh, and so when I push a button, uh, it's, it will beep and then it'll flash a little red LED in here. When I got it, I was really excited because uh, it had a few of the telltales of being a sub gigahertz uh, device or a sub gigahertz remote and uh, I was really keen on, on, on playing with it. I don't think I actually own any sub gigahertz devices. So this would be my first one. Uh, now on site, the, there, are, there are a couple of things. The first to look at is for this, this like this, right? So there is no window here, like you would expect for like a, a television remote. And there's no bulb, like you might expect for like a cheaper uh, Amazon string light remote or something like a, a cheaper fan remote. So this is the giveaway that we are not working with infrared. So that boils it down to likely being either Bluetooth, uh, which is, you know, the kind of technology you would see for maybe a uh, uh, Roku remote or Chromecast remote, or Fire TV remote, uh, or it could be sub gigahertz. Now, to me, what, what identifies this as sub gigahertz uh, is twofold. One, it doesn't say it's Bluetooth and Bluetooth te technology generally advertises itself because the user has to interact with it. You have to pair your device with the technology. Uh, and that means that it's not like a closed loop. Uh, and so the user has to know that it exists so that they can make the choice to buy the right technology that connects with the right devices. Uh, this is very simple. Uh, it sends a signal and that signal is received. Uh, the only thing I've noticed is that if I press the button once and then I press the button again within a reasonable amount of time, uh, it will actually go from beeping once to beeping twice. So that's a, a pretty good giveaway that we're working with a sub gigahertz device. Now, all devices that use radio frequency are going to have to be registered with the FCC. So this, if you flip over, you know, you see this sticker and it has the FCC ID. Now, Bluetooth is also working on radio signals. So uh, this isn't necessarily going to tell us that it is or isn't a Bluetooth device, but uh, there is a database online where we can look up all the FCC IDs uh, and it'll give us a bunch of information about these devices. This has been the way that people have been finding the frequencies that different devices operate on uh, because it'll show you, it'll show us that along with some other stuff when we look this up. So uh, that's going to be a fun way to, to figure out stuff and learn a little bit more about the device. And I definitely recommend you check those out, but the flipper has its own convenient little tool for this. So we're going to turn this on we're going to go to sub gigahertz and we're going to go to the frequency analyzer. This has actually in and of itself had some nice fancy upgrades when I first got my Libra Zero. Uh, the, the frequency analyzer was basically just the primary numbers, uh, you know, uh, but they've added this, this little space in the corner here where 
we it saves like the last three frequencies that it's analyzed. Uh, this can get a little hectic if you're in a place that's actually see I haven't pushed anything and it's already it's catching a, a frequency. Uh, so the, the, it it can get a little bit hectic, but well, let's try this out. Well, there you go. So uh, this confirms that, in fact, we are playing with a, a sub-gigahertz device because the sub-gigahertz antenna in here uh, has picked it up. So we can see it's 433.879, uh, which is a very common frequency, so common, in fact, that we're going to go to read raw. The read doesn't seem to function properly, and I don't know if that's uh, because of development or, or what, but... Uh, read raw does work just fine but we can see here in the top left corner that it's already set to 433.92 by default uh, so let's go to the configuration uh, and we can see that if we needed to we can change the frequencies here it's also modulation so if, if uh, you're trying it and you know it's the right frequency but it's not working still try a different modulation two ams and two fms uh, and then we have the RSSI threshold. And this is actually a little bit of an interesting one. So let's go back and let's hit record. So you can see there's kind of this baseline, this little like this noise that's constantly occurring on the bottom here. I'm gonna hit stop. We're gonna erase that, we're gonna go back. Now, if I go to the RSSI threshold and I change that, we're gonna drop that down. Now you can see this dashed line. Uh, and this dash line is actually, uh, you know, this is, at least in my case, uh, above the, the noise that's in my area. So now I'm going to hit record. Uh, and now it's not even recording because none of the signals around me are strong enough to basically trigger it to record. So let's try this again. Now we're going to... Now that's actually really convenient uh, because if I was... If I didn't have the RSSI threshold set properly, then it would have uh, began recording as soon as I hit record, uh, and then it would continue to record endlessly until uh, I hit stop. But this basically automatically uh, stops recording because nothing is above that frequency. We're going to hit send. And there you go, we have a nice clear signal. And that's gonna be really helpful too, especially if uh, you know, you're know sending this back to like your uh, you know, your computer for, for further analyzing or use in a different way. Uh, we can also save, uh, you can name it and save. Just so you know, this will always go into the uh, sub gigahertz folder that's in the flipper zero and so if you have like a more complex organization uh, you're gonna basically just have to capture a bunch of stuff and then pull your card put use a card reader in your computer do your organization and then put the card back into your flipper zero and uh there you go that's capturing and a couple of little tips on how to learn a little bit more about the devices around you uh so that you can spot some gigahertz devices in the wild uh, and you know you can we can learn to to interact with them or uh, you know again as as always uh, ethical hacking is is the norm here uh, and you should not attempt to target devices that are not your own uh, but it's it's just fun to be able to to reimagine the world and to, to look around and say oh I think that that might be a sub gigahertz device you know it's it's like when I used to skate and uh, you know what was just a curb now became a skate spot. And what was just a loading dock was now a skate spot. Uh, a handrail was something to skate. Uh, now, now you'll start seeing those things around. You'll start seeing remotes and being like, oh, hey, can I see that real fast? <laughs> I'm just curious, you know? Uh, and yeah, I hope that helps you figure out, you know, if there are some devices around you and uh, it gives you something a little bit to play with. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Rad Linux.